All right, to start off, just again as review, I think it's always good to review the, the basics of what we've talked about in the previous uh, classes. Uh, again, starting my thread, I usually start it around the eye or the thorax area and holding tight with your left hand, you work your way back over. And then as you get to the point where it's secured, you can either cut or rip it off. Now in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about how to tie on and wrap stuff around the hook. So we're generally talking bodies, uh, but the same concept can apply to a lot of different things. But again, as a base, we're just going to go back to what we've talked about a little bit previously, which would be starting with uh, some tailing. And what we're going to do, and this is a very important concept, is that as you tie, you have to, probably one of the most challenging parts for uh, beginners is to know at what point to tie in what materials. And so you really have to kind of backwards engineer the fly. Now, the general rule of thumb is what you tie in first is going to be wrapped last up the hook shank if you're wrapping things. So things like tail or wings, you can tie in those those in in a different sequence. But but in general, first wrapped, last, first tied on, last wrapped up. And I'll show you an example here in a sec. So again, I'm using some bright thread just for visibility purposes. And I've got my tail, which we talked about in our last uh, class. And again, I'm just going to measure the tail of how much I want to be off the back. And I would just place that transfer and then just tie that in. Okay, now again, this is just a, it isn't a, a pattern or a particular pattern necessarily. We're, we're just talking about some techniques. And uh, I can, of course, clip off the tag ends here. Now, let's say, for instance, I was going to do two parts of my body. So a lot of your bodies are going to be made with fur or dubbing. They can be peacock curl, they can be different types of uh, quills or biots and different feather pieces. Uh, they can be wire. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole slew of things that you can use to make your bodies with. And very often those bodies are going to have what's called a ribbing. And so I'm going to do an example here where we're going to do a dubbed body. So we're going to learn how to dub and we're going to learn how to rib. And it's important because um, we're going to tie in the sequence of these materials as we go so that you can see how they're, they're, uh, they're both tied in, wrapped, and the sequence that they go in. So in general, again, as you look at these flies, you need to kind of look at what's going to be wrapped last, and we need to plan for that first. So in the case of the ribbing, generally the ribbing is going to come, it's going to be one of the last things. So I'm just going to grab some wire, and I usually use these little uh, spool tenders. Uh, they come in handy because I don't have to clip my wire if I don't want to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and clip my wire in this case because I'm going to show you a couple things. And you always want to use scissors that you don't mind getting dull if you're going to clip your wire. Don't use your good scissors. Now for any body material I usually recommend that you tie it in so that it goes the length of the body as opposed to just tying everything in here. Because if you have four or five materials you're going to have this huge lump in the butt. So what we do is I, I gauge the length at which I'm going to tie this in, and then I just tie it like this. Okay, so the, and you don't want to use too many wraps because I don't want to get that uh, bulky at the end. Okay, so notice that my wire goes the whole length here. And now, just for kicks, I'm going to tie in another type of material, and I'm going to use some hollow tinsel. And this is going to basically create like a wing case or a back on my fly. And we talked a little bit about this in the last video where you have to do a compensation wrap because as I turn the thread, it's going to actually rotate around the shank of the hook a little bit so that now it's on the top. And work my way back. Okay, so now I've got my wire on first, got my hollow tinsel. Now I'm going to dub the body. 
So dubbing is a very common technique that you're going to use quite a bit in tying flies. And there are several different ways to do this. But one of the best ways is just to, uh, to directly apply the dubbing to your thread. Now you can do this with a dubbing wax. And this is a, a great dubbing wax I use from uh, Al Beatty. And uh, so what, what I like to do, if I'm dealing with a kind of dubbing that's uh, kind of slippery, it's got some synthetics in it, it doesn't want to grab, even some naturals do, is you can take some of this uh, dubbing wax and you can just get your fingers a little tacky. Okay, now I've got my dubbing container here. And you're just going to pick out a little bit. And usually with dubbing, less is more. Now I pull my thread out. I have that dubbing. And now I'm going to simply twist in one direction and make that dubbing adhere to the thread. That's where that wax comes in handy. Some dubbings you don't need to wax, but just in this one we will. Now, I have a couple different ways I can do this. I can just wrap, and as I wrap, I cover the body and move forward. And, it, and you see as I move forward that it creates a nice even taper. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Another way, if you have a rotary vise, is you can actually rotate and just hold your bobbin in place. And it will do the same thing. So I'm just going to finish this one up. So now, if we think back, we did our wire first, then our tinsel, then the dubbing. And usually when we do the bodies, you know, we'll want to make the, the uh, body nice and even. This one is not super even because we're not making a, a real fly necessarily. But it is tapered up. And at this thorax area, I may tie in something else and you can do a soft tackle or something like that. But now I'm going to pull my tinsel and I'm just going to rotate this so you can see there. And so that's one part of the body. I've pulled the tinsel forward. And then the last piece then would be my wire ribbing. And so for ribbing, it's the same type of thing. And this is what you call a, a rib or a barber pull wrap. Where I'm going to wrap it, you take one hand over, grab it with the other hand underneath, come up and pass it again, and just keep doing that back and forth. And this will do a couple things. It will actually help tame our dubbed body and give it a nice segmentation. Now I could have also done that wrap with my uh, rotary function on my, on my vise. So again, if you remember, we tied in our wire first, but the wire came last. Tied in our hollow tinsel, and then uh, we tied our dubbing, which went up first. So that's a dubbed body with ribbing. Okay, the next type of body that we're going to talk about is one that can either be wire or tinsel or span flex type of material, but it's basically going to be a solid body. It's not ribbed and there's no dubbing involved. But the same type of principle applies. I do want to show you, however, a quick way to do the the wire ribbed body. So again, we're just going to tie our thread in. And as I've mentioned in the past, I use these spool tenders. You just get these at the craft store. You can go on my YouTube channel. I have a video on how to make them. But again, to keep the taper consistent, I'm going to measure out my wire to be the length of the body that I want to have covered and I simply wrap that in and I'm going to come back around and down the shank of the hook and you see that you're now basically attaching or lashing that wire to the hook shank. Now one very important aspect is as I'm wrapping I'm introducing twist into my thread. This is UTC Ultra Thread, and it's a floss type thread, so it will lay flat, which is very important for, uh, for these wire bodies. If it, it gets ropey on you and it's twisted, then the wire can sit down in between those, lead wrap, or those uh, thread wraps. So, so you want to give it a counterclockwise spin. So I'm just grabbing my, my bobbin here and spinning it counterclockwise until I can see that I've released a lot of those twists. And now I'm going to take my thread Go back up the hook shank, 
to the thorax area. Now this is where a, a, this a spool minder and a rotary vise really come in handy. So I've got my spool, kind of holding it off camera here, a little bit at an angle, you can see that, and then I'm simply going to wrap, or sorry, I'm going to rotate the vise towards me. And this will help me create a nice solid body. And as I need more wire, I can release that. And I may have a little bit of space in here because I'm a little bit further away from the uh, hook as I normally am. Now you'll see that my bobbin here is is uh, accumulating thread, which is fine. You can throw a half hitch in there and use your bobbin cradle if you want. But and again, I'm just these are called touching turns. And then when I get to the end of where I want that to be, I can then tie that off. So again, to when we tie off material, we basically take the material you want to tie off, cross it, come up underneath it with a thread, keep remain underneath it for a couple of times. Grab our scissors for wire and we snap that off. Now, as I look at that, it's not the prettiest because again, I'm kind of far away from the hook with the camera in front of me, but you get the idea. So that's a wire body. The same thing would apply to span flex or quill bodies or anything else. You're, you're creating touching turns with a thread base for the fly that's very flat, and those turns are gonna be one right next to the other um, similar to what I have here, but uh, better. Okay, next we're going to focus on a peacock hurl body. You'll see a lot of flies that have peacock hurl in them, so it's a good uh, material to learn how to tie in. So what I'm going to do is again start my thread. I'm just going to start right up here and come back to about the thorax area. And now this fly, as you'll see, like I said earlier, a lot of the flies that you tie are going to have ribbing. And that's usually a wire or a, some sort of tinsel or crystal flash. Could be mono, could be thread. Um, and, and so the ribbing has a couple of different purposes in this case. And in the scenario where we're using peacock curl, it's a very delicate and brittle material. So if you don't rib it, chances are it may fall apart as it gets in a fish's mouth or gets uh, nicked on a rock or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to have peacock curl for the body and then we're going to rib it with some wire to reinforce it. And so if you're thinking in terms of the order of things that we're going to tie in, we're going to tie in our wire first because that's going to come up last. It's going to come up the hook last. So, you know, imagine whatever pattern this may be. It may have a tail, it may not, but regardless, we're focusing on the body. I'm going to tie in my wire, just like we've done in the past. And I can work my way up before I start going down. It, create, it helps uh, create a nice little taper. And now I can do the same type of thing with my peacock curl. And so I usually use, depending on the size of the fly and the application, uh, two or three strands. And so in this case, I'm going to use two strands of peacock curl. And again, I want them to be body length so that it doesn't mess up my taper. And now as I wrap back down, I'm just kind of keeping these so that they're all together and on top of my hook shank. And I would come back as far as I need to. And then if I've got some wraps, I'd throw in a couple of counterclockwise spins of my bobbin. And that will undo the, any twists and make sure my th thread lies flat. It's not going to matter so much now that I'm using peacock curl because it will... It will uh, cover that up. And then I come up here. And again, you, if you want to use your rotary feature, you can leave the bobbin hanging. Um, I'll show you another trick here. You can throw in a half hitch. Which we showed in another video, but the half hitch is basically pull your a loop around your finger like that. And then that just creates a hitch. And then off camera here, you can't see it. I've got my bobbin cradle. And that just holds my bobbin 
out at an angle to the hook shank so that when I spin this, the thread's not going to wrap around my hook. So I've got my peacock curl, and I'm going to show you another little trick here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this in the opposite direction. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, this is the opposite direction that I would normally rotate the vise. Normally I'm coming uh, away from me, now I'm coming towards me. And on this one I'm also, you can see, letting a little bit of the uh, body shine through, which is uh, intended in this case because I do want some of that orange. Um, and then you have to come back around with your thread and tie off your peacock. As with anything, you have to cross underneath the material, come up, throw a few wraps. Now this is peacock curl. Snips right off with your fingers. You don't have to cut it. You, have to, you do have to make sure that you've got it securely tied. Okay, now I, I could do the same thing with my wire, but it's just as quick in this scenario to go up. And I'm going to wrap this one the traditional way, which is away from me as I wrap. And this is going to add some segmentation, but also some durability to the body. And then as I get back, I cross my material over, take a couple of wraps underneath it, and then I can go in front of it, grab my wire scissors, and cut it. You can also, well, you can also helicopter this and it will fatigue it and break it off. I don't like doing that because it takes too long. So that's just an additional body style and a wrapping style using peacock curl.